Hey everyone, here I am in Microsoft Flight Simulator again, looking at flight training. I've done the basic handling, 76% not too bad. We're gonna take a look at takeoff and landing. Let's go. Okay, so I haven't done this at all, so we better start with the start, taxiing. Let's go. Um, so what I will do with this is attempt to do all of these in one movie. We'll see how we go, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, hopefully the, the captain will tell me what to do. So you're playing Microsoft Flight Simulator at the minute? Let me know in the comments. More comments is the best. I will reply to stuff that's useful. You know, so I'm very, very good at reading my comments. I read all my comments. Comics, not comics, comments. <laughs> all right, so come on, come on, come on. The one thing that's getting on my wick with this game is the load times. I'm on an Xbox Series X. This is installed directly to the main hard drive. It should be super zippy. So what is it doing? I don't get it. Is it having to load loads of stuff off the fly? Is it pulling stuff off the internet? I don't know. It's it's annoying, but never mind. Let's take a moment so to talk about taxiing. Okay. Taxiing refers to moving the aircraft on the ground under its own power. In particular, getting from the ramp out to the hold short point on the edge of the runway. Steering on the ground is managed through the rudder pedals. That's right. That's Unlike them. driving a car, we turn by using our feet. Okay, ready? Oh, that's confusing. With the throttle idle, release your parking brake. Where's that? Okay, okay. left. Now, on the D-pad. Gently increase throttle to get the aircraft moving. Okay. Go easy on your throttle. Use your rudder pedal to turn left and enter Oops. the taxiway. As you increase power... Uh. Watch the tachometer and make sure to stay around 1,000 RPM. Watch your speed. Now test the brakes. Watch your speed. Good. Brakes checked. Taxi to the next exit, then come to a stop. Remember to control your speed with throttle and brakes. See the crossing in front of us? Stop. Unfortunately, one of your wheels crossed out of the taxiway. What taxiway? Taxi to the next exit, then come to a stop. Remember to control your speed with throttle and brakes. See the crossing in front of us? Oh, okay. For it as if traffic was coming off the runway. Watch your speed. Oh, a little bit more. Come on. It's so weird because you can have the propeller still go and then slap the brakes on and you can you kind of your engine still going. It's a bit alien. All right, taxi to holding point Alpha 1 next. It's at the far end of the airport near the head of runway 21. Stay as close as possible to the taxiway center marked by the yellow line and watch your oh, okay. speed. I find that a little bit confusing as well because I'm obviously in the left of the plane. Watch your speed. Watch your speed. She don't like me going fast on here, does she? Watch your speed. After the right turn, come to a stop before the hold short point in prep for takeoff. Watch your speed. Uh. So weird. Come on. Oh, we're done. There we go. Trouble with this game, I think, is going to be. Oh, break, 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 break. Oh. Remain on the taxiway center line. You don't want to risk damaging the aircraft. The next okay. challenge will be to keep the aircraft under control while at full throttle for takeoff. Whoa. C. Rubbish. That was hard. It's so weird though because it's so alien compared to driving a car. You know, it's just everything's... There's so many controls. <laughs> ah. Yeah, we didn't do too good there, but never mind. Let's keep going. You know. 
This is only potentially being seen by loads of people, you know. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, take off. Let's do take off. It's strange though, because you can't really jump straight into this game without doing the training. There's just too much to learn. Uh, well, you can, but then you crash. <laughs> And yeah, I think the other problem with it is ugh, loading times, but also if you want to play this occasionally, there's a lot of controls that you're going to forget uh, unless you play this game regularly. Um, so yeah, lots to remember and it's quite an investment of time. But of course, being on the Xbox Game Pass, that's really cool that you don't have to spend anything additional. You know, it's a great looking game. I mean, look at that, it's beautiful. I'm determined to learn how to fly. A mile of road will take you a mile. A mile of runway will take you anywhere. Oh, Taking nice. Off isn't hard, but there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Check to the right to see if a vehicle is on the runway, and to the left to make sure no other planes are approaching. We're good. Yeah, hey, just done there. Everything looks good, no cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. Now slowly taxi onto the runway and align the plane with the center line. Then stop your plane just after the number 21. Whoops. Whoa. Break, 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 break. My brakes aren't working. Oops. Gonna have to do that again. <laughs> I can't tell when my throttle's to zero. I'm hitting the brakes enough and it's happening. Keep working on it, you'll get better. I need to. All right, let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Okay. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Whoops. Good. Now gently pull back on the yoke. We're up, gang. Whoa! Good grief. We're airborne. Only just. I am still finding this controller so sensitive. Line up the top of your instrument panel so you put your plane in a dangerous situation. I did? Alright, let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Trying to stay on the center line, but I'm, I am doing the smallest of touches on the controller. Good. Left trigger, right now trigger. Gently pull back on the yoke. Uh, and again, that is tiny, tiny touch pull on the on stick. The to take off. And we're airborne. She wanted 5,500 feet. Of your instrument panel, so it's a couple of inches above the horizon. That will my instrument panel. And set a good climb attitude. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. 210. 75 knots, and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time. Where's, where's the knots? I can't remember. Ah, uh, that's there. 60 at the minute. I think that's the top left dial. You put your plane in a dangerous oh, it's situation. so not in a dangerous situation. Alright, let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. <laughs> Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Right, so I think the knots is the top left. Things so I've got now, full power back on the yoke. Oh, the smallest of gently pullbacks. There we go. Uh. Oh, and we 
Okay, I'm just gonna try and hold this here. Line up the top of your instrument panel so it's a couple of inches above the horizon. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. Maintain 75 knots and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time. I can't seem to get to 75 knots because I'm too steep. Maybe. Could be. All right, let's lower that slightly. Uh, up to 60 knots. See those sort of wobbles left and right, that's me just touching the left trigger, right trigger, or left trigger in this case to try and get to 210 degrees. See the dial down the bottom left? I cannot get this to it. I'm on. Okay, 5,500 feet. You've reached your target altitude. Whoa. Good job. B, that's hard, man. That was hard. You see, it took me a couple of goes. So I'm going to leave those in because they weren't too annoying, I hope. <laughs> right, let's see what's next. Training menu. Dead stick landing. How many of these we got? We've got a few, aren't we? Okay. Sixty-five knots is what we're gonna go to. Yeah, so um all the instruments, I'm starting to get slightly, slightly used to them, but it's so weird having all these things to look at as you're trying to look out the window, as you're moving up, down, left, right. You've got various controls. You can obviously turn left and right by tilting the plane, but you can also use your tail rudder. Um, and then you've got things like your uh, trim that you can mess around with. Obviously the accelerator or the throttle rod. So weird. Interesting though. For this landing exercise, I want you to focus on the yoke only. We're close enough to the runway to land safely without adding any throttle. Maintain a speed of around 65 knots. Pitch down if you're going too slow. Pitch up if you're too fast. Okay. So I'm gonna try and straighten myself. See that, that's a teeny, teeny movement. That's the right trigger I'm doing there, just to try and straighten us up a little bit. And I am, I am just touching it, just. Speed at 65 knots. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. To flare, flare means to raise the nose of the aircraft to slow your descent for a softer landing, but without ever leveling off or climbing. The main landing gear will touch down before the nose wheel does. Well, I'm wonky. Coming up on flare height, resist the temptation to pull back. Now focus on the end of the runway and pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. I don't know how nice. I did that. I now thought it was going to crash. Now the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. That could have been better. Well done, but there's room for improvement. There definitely Keep in was. Mind that approaching the runway at the right speed is key to a good landing. Well, there we go. We got a B. Get the idea there. We landed the plane. We didn't die. It was close. <laughs> All right. So let's go with the next one. So I am on this. The default sensitivity, but I think after this I'm going to mess around with it a little bit and see whether I can get it a bit, a bit less sensitive. I'm hoping there's some controls for that. Landing without elevator. Focus on throttle for a smooth approach. Okay. If too high, reduce throttle. If too low, add throttle. Okay.
It must be amazing to do this in real life, but it would terrify the heck out of me just being in control of a big hoofing machine <laughs> and trying to land it on a big lump of hard ground. It's like, well, I think I'll be all right up in the sky, but as soon as it was landy time, I'd be like, landing exercise, I want you to focus on staying on the glide path using the throttle only. Smooth okay. action on the throttle is key for remaining on the correct glide path. If you find yourself too high, reduce your power. If you're too low, increase it. Remember though, always make soft corrections. You don't want to overcompensate. So I don't know if I, it, I'm best to use this sort of... Whoa, sorry. Again, tiny, tiny touches. See, I don't know whether I'm best to tilt like that to try and align myself or use the tail rudder, but the tail rudder is just so twitchy. I'm still nowhere near the alignment, am I? Now you can use the elevator to land. The what? Reduce throttle to idle. Now focus on the end of the runway and pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Nice. Now apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Well, I was a bit off-center there, but I think that's just me being a Brit. I'm trying to land on the left of the road. It'd be. It's all right. I'm not quite sure how I was using the throttle to go up and down. I don't think I really was that, but of course you can. I mean, what I do like about these training areas is you can obviously go back to these as much as you want to get more confident with it. What else we got? Three more landing. Runway threshold. Blah blah blah. Okay. And the two main wheels first. Right, I'm going to attempt to be centre. I find it a little bit hard as well because obviously you're sitting left in the plane. So to try and sort of see where centre, I don't know, just find a bit difficult. Okay. My first instructor used to say, the best part of flying is landing in one piece. Yeah, that's Jimmy got idea. You're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. And I've already set us up in landing configuration at 65 knots with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. Keep your aim point on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. I forgot what flare was. miles away. Maybe that'll give me enough time to actually straighten up, what do you reckon? Almost look like I know what I'm doing here, but again, on the controller, tiniest of movements. Oh, it's so, so small. If, I'll tell you, if you sneeze, <laughs> You're gonna like crash your plane. A good. And now I'm not aligned yet. I'm just sort of trying to fly across a little bit before I straighten up. But again, look at that. That is a minuscule touch on the left trigger, and it really knocks the plane. So now I'm just barely touching the left trigger. So sensitive. Now that might be an Xbox Series X problem. I'm not sure to be honest. I'd love to know if you're on the um, One X or the One. If it works on yours um, and is the controller less twitchy because this is super twitchy 
that that, that was I don't even know a millimeter I'm, I'm just a stroke in the trigger there I don't know why I'm so wonky here let's go right across and then try and straighten up whoa sorry gang it's making me feel seasick or airsick Accidentally, damn! I hit the stick um, that switches to cursor mode. That's why we had the little circle there. That's quite annoying because I was trying to control everything and I lost control because <laughs> so I had to click that. You did well, but you can do better. I could do a lot better if I didn't click that flaming Keep in stick. Mind that approaching the runway at the right speed is key to a good landing. Okay. I'll tell you what, even though I'm fine, or rubbish, I'm surprised I'm getting bees. What else we got? Downwind. Follow a traffic pattern to prepare for landing. Okay. Oh no. That means I've got to do some turning. I haven't got a clue. Good distance from the runway is the gliding distance you can judge by seeing the runway. Blah blah blah. That was a bit too quick. Speed and flaps extended. Hmm. In a left hand pattern, all your turns will be to the left. Okay, we're currently flying on the downwind leg at the standard traffic pattern altitude of 6,000 feet. It's a flight path parallel to the landing runway, but in the opposite direction. In downwind, you want to start preparing for landing. That means setting your speed and flaps configuration. Okay. Use speed to 80 knots. Maintain constant altitude and heading. The flaps provide extra lift at the expense of additional drag. This extra lift allows flying at a lower airspeed. Flaps allow for smoother and shorter landings. Go ahead and extend 10 degrees of flaps, all while maintaining current altitude. Here you are. Hang on a minute, because... We're going to fly past the end of the runway here. Keep going until you see it at a 45 degree angle behind you. That's your cue to turn left onto the base leg. Maintain 80 knots, got that. Maintain 6,000 feet. Where am I? Am I too high? Looks like it. I'm looking at the altitude, sort of the dial to the top right of the clock. Got to come down a bit, but that's increasing my speed a bit as well. Turn left onto the base leg. So I'm trying not to tilt too much. I've got obviously tilt a bit. Oh, I'm going very slow. Give me some throttle. I've dropped my altitude a bit as well. Try to maintain 1400 RPM. That'll also keep our speed around 65 knots. Turn left onto final. Keep an eye on the runway as we get ready for our final turn. Make your left turn onto final. 
fine. Ah, oh, that's the wrong way. Keep a stabilized approach and prepare for landing. Maintain 65 knots, gotta slow down. Well, I'd do for a digital readout so I could actually read things properly. Come on, slow down a little bit. Okay. Whoa. Sorry. Whoops. Apply the brakes and stop the plane. Do you see my cursor appeared there? That's because I clicked the um, button again. That's quite annoying. <laughs> the point where you, you really need to have that stick working. <laughs> Fix it like the cursor mode. Brilliant. I was lucky there. The Very lucky. Pattern well. Good job. My landing was cack. Cack landing. But I still got to be. Well, don't fly like I do, kids. Like a flaming drunk man. We're nearly there, though, with the takeoff and landing flight training. Okay. First solo flight. Oh, exciting! This is where I forget everything. Oh, my word. It's going to take eight minutes, gang. Stay with me. Stay with me, goose. Is it Goose or is it Cougar? I can't remember. You tell me, Top Gun fans. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've watched the film. I think it's Goose. Or is it? Or is it someone else? I can't remember. He certainly won't fly in one of these though. So, would you consider a different control system if you're going to play this a lot on the Xbox Series X or Xbox One X or Series S? I don't know what will work or whether you can do that or not. I don't know. Your first solo flight. Oh my goodness! I'll be watching from the ground in radio contact if you need me. But what? I'm on my own. Me you won't. Your goal is to complete Sedona's left-hand traffic pattern on your own. Remember what we covered in our previous sessions, and you'll be just fine. I hope I get some sort of markers. See you on the other side. Okay, let's go. Throttle. Give us some beans. See, why does it pull off there? So I'm just touching that left stick, uh, left trigger, right trigger there. See, one thing I don't get is how do I know when my throttle is full? I suppose I could look down, but I don't want to look down because I'm trying to look out of the front. Okay, up we go. Well, that's a good start. Aha, end of the upward, up wind lake. Sorry about the flow reading there. I'm really concentrating. So I'm trying to look at that little, I don't even know what that thing is next to my speed. So what are we at, 65 knots? We want to maintain 75 knots apparently. Okay. A little bit more, so I can't climb so high because my throttle's up full as far as I'm aware. There we go. Oh, no, too high. There we go. Just a tedious movement there, trying to straighten me up with a pedal. Five thousand seven hundred feet. Climbing. Keep on climbing. Oh, too fast of a climb. Oh man, the t t sort of sensitivity is driving me mad. These are the teeniest, tiniest movements. 
that that was uh, two millimeters on the right trigger and it really knocked the plane Okay, now where are we go. Turn left. Can't go too crazy, can I? I'll go here. It's really pretty though, look at that sky. Beautiful. I can certainly see the appeal of flying. I'm getting better with my control, I think, but again, tiniest, tiniest movements. Whoops. Ah, oh, see, that was rubbish. Okay, downward leg. See, if I didn't have those little pointers, I'd be totally lost as well. Oops, yeah, see that tiny little movement on the left trigger and just goes crazy. Such a small movement I'm having to do. And I mean like half a millimeter of pressure. So we're leveling off there. I'm going to try and get this up to 80 knots now by being fairly level with my flying. <laughs> Come on, let's get to 80 knots. Yes. Maintain 6,000 feet. Am I high? Okay, I am. so hard though because like you think oh, I'll drop the height but then you like speed up at my 100 knots there she's going to tell me I'm dangerous in a minute isn't she I'm like maverick come on down to 6,000 feet so that's my altometer oh altometer oh, whatever it is altometer you see there just below where it says equipped just to the top right of the clock so about 6,200 feet in the minute just trying to level it off so I don't fall too far because then she gets well tetchy Whoop, dropping quite hard there nearly come on 6,000 feet come on baby there we go Yes. Oh, extend flaps. Okay. Oh man, I tell you, this is this is stressful. Just trying to do all these things. Six thousand feet. I'm too high. So hard to keep it level. Oh, I could use that trim thing, couldn't I? I can't remember how to do it there. There's trim. I forgot about trim. So that's right button and whoops. Oh man. Let's extend the flaps. there okay so we're nearly at the end of the base leg we 
reduced power to 1400 RPM. Uh, turn left for the final approach. There it is. Can we land it? Going way too fast, so I'm going to try and lower the speed. Way too quick. Got no throttle on at all now. Flying way too fast. Whoa, bouncy. Whoops. I tell you what though, for a first solo flight that wasn't too bad, was it? I, I want to do that again, but I think that was pretty good. I'll just stop the plane. I think a bit more practice may be a good idea. You're on your way to becoming one hell of a pilot. One hell of a pilot, I don't know about that. There we go, so that was the flight school training done there. So let's go on to the next list. We've got to see, I would like to revisit there, but you know, I think that was all right. So um, let's have a little look at the tr train there. So we've done uh, basic handling, now take off and landing. Um, just have a little look at the different areas there. So I like that we can go back and revisit. I definitely need to have another look at that first solo flight and improve that. I like that you can go back to these things and improve them and keep your scores as well. What did you think of that? Was that interesting to see? Do let me know in the comments. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, any thumbs up, much appreciated. If you like this sort of stuff, have a little look at the rest of my channel. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Thanks.